Good morning. This week's message is a continuation of last week's message. And the reason that I see that is because of where Jesus goes with his disciples and the things that he says. It's an expression of a rest that is found in God. It's not found in what you do, but rather found in who you know and who God causes you to become. And so let's hear his word to our hearts this morning through this event in Jesus's life found in Matthew, the 12th chapter. And here's what it says is verse one. And it's verse two, verse uh, eight. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some of the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? They entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple desecrate that day and yet are innocent? I tell you that one greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath, one of those interesting uh, portions of Scripture that we look at. And I want to talk about Sabbath for what it is there that Jesus is talking about. He's not just talking about a literal day, but he's talking about a spiritual concept. And it's the concept of rest. Because we know from Scripture that God created in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested from his labor. And so what, this goes back to that portion of scripture we were looking at last week. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. Take my yoke upon you, for I am lonely and meek of heart. Learn of me. And you will find rest for your souls. In essence, that's what Jesus is telling the Pharisees who are berating his disciples for doing something that in their minds was wrong. And made them out to be uh, failing to live up to God's standard. And again, that's merit. Always remember that. Anytime you fail to live up to God's standard, you're talking about a merit system. And God's not about the merit system. God's about the grace system. Notice what he said to those Jewish rulers. You need to understand this verse of scripture from the Old Testament. I would rather have had mercy than judgment. Judgment has to do with merit. Mercy has to do with grace. So let's continue our looking at what Jesus was saying to his disciples from the previous week, and not just to the disciples, but those around him. He basically said, listen, I want you to come to me. I want you to come to a place of where you can find rest for your souls. I want you to take my yoke upon you. I want you to learn of me, for I am meek and lonely of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Let's start with the first one. Take my yoke upon you. In order to be yoked with Jesus Christ, we need to come into a living relationship with him. This is what's different from the Old Testament and makes this the New Testament, as it were. Because in the Old Testament, we were yoked to the law. 
and its consequences. In the New Testament, we are now yoked to a relationship with God with its consequences. I think of Paul who writes in Philippians and he says to you and me, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you to do, to will and to do of his good pleasure. Who's doing the work? God is. So as we are yoked with God, we come into that place of where God is in control where God is the one that's working with us. When I lived in the prairies and a pastor in Kinnesota, the people that were part of that community had horses that they used for working. I remember talking to uh, one, of, one of the fellows in the church, and I said, so how do you train your horses? He says, well... When we have a new horse, we take one of the older horses who knows what it means to be hooked up to a team and we put him on one side and we tether the young, vigorous horse to, to the older horse and we take him out to, to a huge field and we just let them run, we just let them walk. And invariably what happens, he says, is it will walk in a circle and not a straight line because a young horse He's got more energy, is, wants to do his own thing. He pulls ahead and so pulls the older horse in a circle, as it were. Depending on what side he was tethered on, it'd either be this way or this way, depending on which side he was tethered on. And it wasn't until the new horse learned to walk in tandem with the older horse, that they were able to walk in a straight line. Russell said up to me, or told me, and that's who was telling me this, always told me how fun it was. And I remember going out in the bush with Russell with one of his horses, and we would log in the wintertime. We'd cut down trees, and we'd use his horse to pull the logs out. So he knew what it meant to train a horse how to walk properly as a team. So being yoked is the same. It's being tethered together with Jesus. Walking with him, not ahead of him, and definitely not behind him, but alongside him. Think of that a moment, that picture. And learn of me. Learn of me. Watch what I do. See how I act towards people. Have that same heart and mind. In fact, Paul says, let us have the same mind that was in Christ. Let us have that same attitude, he says in Philippians. That attitude is found in these next few verses. For I am meek and lonely at heart. Meekness is humility. Jesus says of himself, I'm meek. I'm lonely. I'm humble. I'm humble. He talks about himself in this portion of scripture as being the servant. Think of that a moment. Jesus as the servant. Not as, not as, as the puller, not as the one who is greater than. But he's basically saying, I'm equal with. That's an important lesson for us to learn. Meek and lonely in heart. Isn't that a nice picture of a place of contentment, of tranquility? A place of where there is a sense of, of peace, harmony. A place where the burden of life is lifted. Isn't that a place of where we see God's grace and mercy at work in our lives? See, Jesus is talking about the New Testament. So when he's talking about himself as the Lord of the Sabbath, as we read in this first, as in, we read in here in chapter 12, he's talking about, I'm the one who gives rest. I'm the one who is God of the rest. Scripture has a ton more to say about this spiritual rest, especially in the book of Hebrews. 
but time doesn't allow us to really extend ourselves into that. But let's just find this last portion that Jesus says in Matthew. And you shall find rest for your souls. A place where we're not working to be seen or heard, but rather a place of where we are accepted, a place of where we are acknowledged as we are, who we are, where we are, in relationship with Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all you that labor. Jesus says to the Pharisees, if you only understood who I was, you wouldn't berate my disciples for what they did on the Sabbath, but rather you would come to me to find mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love and your goodness toward us. Thank you, Jesus, that in you there is mercy, there is grace, there is forgiveness. There is a place of rest for our souls where we no longer labor to be accepted, but we rest in the sure knowledge that you have accepted us in the beloved. Thank you, Father God, for that in Jesus' name. Amen.